Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hey, Claudia. Hi, everyone. Hey, Napanza. Is what time is this in your local time? Yeah, it's ten thirty p.m. Only ten thirty p.m. Wow. Only. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I always use this joke. When I was in a startup company, um, we used to say 12 hours is only half a day. Yeah. <laughs> True. Um, so let's wait for one more minute um, before we have more people here. Uh, but in the meantime, maybe we'll have a, have a round of introduction. Um, yeah. So, the Pandora now, how about start with you? You will have the the latest time in your zone. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, hi guys, this is uh, Nipendra. I'm based in Bangalore, India. Um, <clears throat> I run a company called Cloudiga, and we train people on containers, Kubernetes, uh, and so on. Now, try to see if we can bring the AI mix into it. Uh, that is my personal motivation to. And I've in this field um, and professional as well. Um, yeah, so uh, um, yeah, anything else? Uh, I, I kind of uh, um, wrote a couple of books, uh, online courses, uh, and previously worked with Red Hat for, uh, for a while. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, so I'm just uh, looking at the, the next one on my screen. Bo, do you mind just uh, introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bo Wen. I'm from uh, IBM Research. Uh, my, well, uh, I did my PhD in physics, but now in AI and cloud computing and digital health. Thank you. So, Ricardo, you are next. Uh, hi, yeah, I'm Ricardo. I'm one of the co-chairs for Tag Runtime. Um, also one of the leads for the uh, Cloud Native AI Working Group. Um, yeah. Happy to collaborate. Great, thank you. Claudia? Everyone, I'm Claudia. Uh, I'm from IBM Research. Um, I work on Kubernetes topics and uh, uh, focusing on observability for um, training models on, uh, on OpenShift and Kubernetes. Great, thank you. Tena? Hi, um, my name is Hannah, and right now I'm a student at undergrad student at Cornell University. Um, also, I just say one thing: I might have to leave a bit early. I have an exam today. So, okay. Yeah. Good luck with your exam. So the meeting is recorded. We are going to share the recording after uh, the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Right. So you how? Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a PhD student in Queen's University, Canada, and my research area is focusing on the summarization and question answering. Great to Hello, see everyone. You. Nice Hi, to meet Sarah. you. Oh, sorry. Do you have Andrew? Hey guys. Uh, just I'm about to start a comment. Just came out of my accommodator. Just wanted to see what you're doing in terms of training on Kubernetes. Yeah. So welcome. Hi, Simon. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sean Anshan. Uh, sorry for uh, my camera is not working. And <clears throat> I'm a undergrad student in computer science, and I look forward to working with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Victor. I'm uh, Drew, uh, uh, semi-retired, uh, just to want to have fun. <laughs> then I serve as a junior developer here. Thank you. Uh, Fahana, if I got your name right, uh, Fahana. Yes. Hi, nice to see Hello. you. Yes. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. OK, good. I'm trying to fix my airport. It's not working. <laughs> anyway, yeah, nice to meet with you. Thank you. It's great to see you all. Uh, so uh, let's just uh, get started. Uh, so I have uh, sent out the slide deck uh, before the meeting. So if you have access, that should be great. I will use my screen sharing uh, to get started. Uh, 
Give me a sec. Okay, there's my screen. Um, can you see my screen, by the way? Yes. yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I think this is great. So because of CNCF is really a focus on hands-on and uh, encourage community participation, I think this is a, a good time we can get uh, together, experiment with some of the um, uh, LM op, uh, apps, and also make our contributions to the community. And in the same time, we can also provide values by making this uh, uh, a CNCF um, presentations available to all of us. Um, okay, so if you're going to the CNCF um, YouTube channels, uh, here we, uh, let me just go back. So we have um, uh, 114,000 uh, 114, uh, subscribers and 9.7 uh, thousand videos. If you have to consider like a half an hour, an hour between the videos, we have tons of videos over there. It becomes a lifelong enjoyment if you want to watch all the videos. Uh, so it becomes impossible to follow everything. Have a summary on the videos will be a great uh, introduce the ideas introduced by the community. Because as you see, uh, each of time we go to KubeCon, we have tens of thousands of people attending and uh, making these uh, available, make these videos available to everyone of us is actually a very good values. Uh, we can save a lot of time. It can make the research um, easier to do and also making the um, contents more accessible. So that's the whole idea. We want to get this started. Um, so for these projects, uh, just using both uh, early comments, we want to turn the unstructured data into structured. Um, so this is, has been typically done in the data, big data era. Uh, so we have a uh, lot of uh, things in the untapped data repositories, and we want to get intelligence out of these uh, repositories. Uh, the typical method is to create certain level of uh, structure and to enable search um, uh, summary and uh, you know this uh, clustering method to get all the information out of it. So this is one of these uh, projects go. The other one is really want to exercise the uh, the power of large language models to make summarizations, uh, categories, and also promote these uh, participants by um, providing different aspects of the content. And also I think for people who are new to CNCF or they are on their early career path, this is also a good opportunity to build your, to pave your way to become a CNCF ambassadors also. Uh, uh, make these uh, apps more ac accessible, provide a reference uh, uh, architecture of using uh, apps to promote content uh, from a community's perspective. Um, that's a little bit deviation from what we are doing here um, from the traditional launching apps, for example. Uh, traditional launching apps is, easy for, is either conducted on Jupyter Notebook uh, for information or, as you see in many of the following cases I listed here, is for websites that will disseminate information on hosted environments. We do not want to have a lot of uh, cost, upfront cost, uh, in, this, in these projects. So we want to have minimal footprint. So why uh, that is important is that uh, uh, hosting an environment is not easy, and uh, hosting an environment also means a lot of uh, um, resource footprints we have to incur. So we want to minimize the deployments um, as to as little as possible. So we want to use in the GitHub Actions to generate content and using GitHub Pages to host the environments. Uh, that will be a, a low, let's just say, low code, uh, no invest, no investments required for the uh, future deployment. Uh, this is also very good. It's actually a typical development environment. Uh, as you see here, most of the CNCF projects, they use GitHub Actions uh, for a lot of deployments. They're using the GitHub pages for the uh, project's web page. Uh, but in this case, we are actually using it for you know, generating the contents for GitHub pages, which is not, a, not typical the way people are doing the business here. Um, so YouTube Summarizer actually becomes more and more accessible. Um, if you are looking back a few years ago, uh, this really takes a bit of challenge. Uh, so I have a list of uh, projects that has been done in these areas. Uh, there's great tutorials as well as walkthroughs. You can see from these examples how to do the uh, YouTube summarizers using Nanchains and also using the Google Clients APIs. Um, so everything is already explained in detail. I do not want to repeat here, uh, but I just want to list a little bit 
um, novelties of what we are doing uh, than they are doing over there as a geometric app. So uh, we have this um, chart of our actions uh, from beginning to end, how this app works. So in the very beginning, we create all our uh, source code will be invoked by GitHub action, either by manual trigger or just an automated trigger, um, you know, nightly or weekly. Once the GitHub action is triggered, uh, it's we're going to the you know either the Python program or you know G uh, Java uh, scripts program, Node.js programs, is triggering uh, uh, certain actions. Uh, first of all, is we are guess the you know using the Google Clients API, uh, which we have to acquire the token access token to create the project, and then using the Google Clients API to list all the videos in CNCF YouTube channel, and from there we are going to uh, download the transcripts. Uh, this has already been automated by Lanchian, so we do not have to spend a lot of time to download the transcripts. Once that happens, it uh, becomes become routine. Uh, the summarization and um, uh, will be uh, executed over the Lanchian's um, cycles. What will be different here is that uh, instead of uh, just summarize the transcripts, we also want to put certain categorizations because as, as you go to each of the CNCF events, there's um, uh, categories of, observ for example, observability, infrastructure, security, and things like that. So we also want to categorize the talks on those areas. Um, it's already, you know, the CNCF events already have different labels on different talks. But many of the talks actually come beyond just a single label. Uh, for example, the observability track uh, talk we submitted this year actually covered more than just observability. It covers sustainability and AI. So pro um, providing the certain labels to the summary is going to be very convenient for the community to track um, what have, what's actually being presented in the video. The next one is the, the dashboard. You know, I come from the background of uh, observability. So I really like the ideas of having a great dashboard to navigate the uh, contents in a very easy way. So I'm not a really an artist artist here, but I um, I do believe this uh, audience here has a great expertise to build up the straightforward and intuitive dashboard that will help the navigation and also providing the great ways of doing the search and the clustering that will help the general audience to participate in these projects as well as I guess information from what we provided. And um, once everything is done, we want to publish the information through GitHub pages so we do not have to run hosting by ourselves. And then we also can access the information we provided through the GitHub page. So that's the overall um, um, flow I have in mind. Just feel free if you have any suggestions. Um, that's where we, uh, so this is a team project. Um, this next, nobody's going to dominate the projects with a single opinionating idea. So your input is uh, really appreciated. Um, so a new, a little bit of nuance here is that the large language model uh, we are going to use, chances are we are not going to be rely on ChatGPT or OpenAI. We want to have a, a variety of uh, models to be experimented. So for local development, developments, I use GPT as well as Oloma. So this is a good way to get your uh, code started and um, have the initial skeleton done. And that's potentially also going to be the preferred local development environments. Um, for CI testing, we potentially, and the eventual hosting, we eventually want to use some of the economical and all free uh, uh, large language model backend services. Uh, so this is still being discussed. I do believe people here have the capacity to get guest the access. So let's just see what's going to happen in the next few weeks. The prompts, in my opinion, uh, is actually the core of these uh, projects um, because not every models not every model doing the same thing. So certain models are, are more advanced than the others and also can generate more content than the others. So the testing environments and the eventual deployment production environments may have different capabilities. So we really want to have the prompts to adapt to different environments. And also we want to expose uh, information that will serve different personas. Uh, so the community participants, like the people who are going to KubeCon and people from the uh, leadership team at CNCF, they also have different views of what's the kind of information they are looking for. For developers like me, I'm looking for talks that will explain certain technologies in more details like deep dive, and for end users, uh, probably like um, people from the uh, you know, production team, they want to use in certain 
uh, tricks or technologies that will help them for their you know, production environments. So these are the personas we hopefully can serve using a simple, uh, I don't know if simple is the right word, but let's say using a smart prompt that will generate the necessary information for everybody. I know that is going to be a challenge, so let's see how that's put it down. Um, the GitHub page is the way I see the values of these projects, uh, the ex external visible values of these projects. So we want to have a certain capabilities. The search is definitely the way. We want to search by different categories, by keyword. Um, so speakers, uh, for people like me, probably just want to see who is the speaker of this event, things like that. Um, so events and the project names, also technology being used, that's the type of keyword I want to search. And also I want to search by content um, using the similarity search. Uh, so that means that puts out certain requirements for these projects, uh, which means most likely we are going to use the vector, vector store uh, that's going to be hosted somewhere. So in, a, in the same line with the language, uh, large language model backend, right? Hopefully somewhere can host the model for us, uh, host the, uh, the model as well as the vector DB for us. Um, the dashboard, um, I'm not so, as I said, I'm not a great artist in this area. So my, uh, just from the usability perspective, I want to have certain capabilities to present the UIs that will show the topics are presented as different year. Let's say 10 years ago, it's more like a Kubernetes. And as the CNCF move on, um, there's more than, more than just uh, infrastructure, there's uh, applications. And that's, that's kind of the progressions of the topic we want to see year by year. And that's probably going to be more helpful for the leadership in CNCF to view what's the dynamics of the community, right? So also on the projects, as the projects go into different maturity levels, information uh, will be uh, vary uh, year by year, event by event. That's kind of a thing we also want to use to gauge the health and the activities of the projects. So things like that will mean a lot, of the, uh, mean a lot to the end users as well as the uh, community uh, ecosystem contributors. So um, how to build the dashboard? I think that's um, uh, going to be a very challenging um, views and we use, uh, we, let's see who's in the, um, so we have a, a Dale. So here's the PM. Um, he, uh, I will ask uh, Adele to drive this uh, use case from the endpoint perspective. Uh, so that's where we are very uh, productive. Uh, we are borrow your productive um, expertise to drive these uh, usabilities. Um, GitHub actions, uh, get, sorry, GitHub pages. So, by default, we can use Njikali from uh, GitHub, but I uh, preference of uh, uh, Next.js, which can present more complicated views, especially when we come to a dashboard. We can build up the dashboards using the existing components from uh, the React community to build up the more advanced views. Uh, that's more, that will be more productive. Um, so that also means we have to have a certain expertise to run the application development as well as to design the UI. Okay. Um, next thing. So for developments, um, so this really, uh, I have uh, somebody will, will be, um, let's see, have a, we have a sign up page. Uh, so hopefully you can provide your email and if GitHub ID, so we can track to uh, the expertise here um, to leverage the community to make the things happen. So the initial idea is that uh, we have a repo. So we are using that repo uh, for developments. So I will create, um, the branch for GitHub action uh, for GitHub pages, and then the uh, directory for the um, summary project. So if, when you are developing the project, you just fork the repo and then put your scripts in the directory uh, for that summary. And for GitHub actions, you fork the you fork the uh, repo, but we only push the contents to GitHub action branch. So that's going to be the arrangement. So it depends on your ex expertise and availability. Your Bandwidth, uh, pick one of these things that you want to do. Uh, that will be uh, better organized in the future. So when you provide your PRs, uh, please also have certain unit tests in it. So we can, because uh, not everybody's uh, uh, large language models are the same. So certain things working on your end may not work on the other people. Uh, for example, the, um, the contents that are generated with certain prompts may not be working in the same way with the other um, uh, model. So if you can unit test it, provide your screenshots, that will be very helpful when we track the capabilities that you are developing. All right, that is all from me, uh, Mumbling Jumbling, and uh, I want to turn the table to you and see what's your opinions 
Um, and what's, uh, what do you think uh, to make this happen? So I, I have a couple of qu comments and maybe questions, uh, uh, Human. So I, so I think initially we, that, that it, in my mind, there are multiple goals for, for, for such projects, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the goals is to build uh, an application uh, that we could prototype simply, and that application could reuse existing tooling from the cloud native landscape and, and reuse maybe existing reference architectures to demo, like here is how we build a RAG, which is a common use case in the community. Here's how we build an, NL an LLM application. Here's what an LLM application typically is composed of, and here's how other people are building it. So from an infrastructure perspective, how cloud native is helping AI, and here's an example of a very useful AI that we could use. The other side of the coin is I understand that we potentially want this to be to look great and feel great, uh, but there's also things like you know there are people who who built um, uh, uh, you know YouTube transcript summarizers, and that would be basically mm -hmm. like it, it doesn't need a fancy UI; it just needs to work with something like Chainlit or, or so. So I think we could you know in my mind we could go simple on on the categorization and so on. And, it, you know, there are also other means to categorize. We don't have to use LLMs. And so I think for an LLM, we want to add targeted for a use case that people are, are no, right? Uh, in other words, we could start very, with very simple and say, we will feed it some transcripts and then compose the components to be cloud native friendly um, and showcase if that's the goal. Like if the goal is to for us to build a very, advanced um, uh, and a, 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 an explicit UI, um, then it, it also changes. Uh, but in my initial uh, uh, reaction is like, it might be too much to think about, you know, the, the UI now versus like what, what serves the UI and the other things. I think that makes sense. So I think uh, um, you know, some in summary, uh, what I understand is that uh, we probably going to have a roadmap of doing the deliver the uh, the final project. So we can start from simple, just get the simple stuff uh, like a skeleton. Start a stand up first, uh, get the YouTube transcripts, uh, compose the content, and then we are building uh, from step by step. We're building up certain intelligence on it, uh, make a summarization, and also potentially eventually. Um, that's all depends on the availability of the audience here to have the, you know, nice to have UIs and a certain other advanced features. Would that be a reasonable um, plan? Let me just copy. Uh, my brain is a little bit short circuited this morning. I have so many meetings. Okay. Okay, yeah. So yeah. let's just say we probably it's a good idea. We just say the deliverables in the time frame um, case. Are you to summarize all the videos or only with respect to the domain in the AI ML or we just say that we'll take all the videos from the very yeah, beginning? Yeah, I think the uh, all the videos were great. All the videos, okay. So let's just uh, copy. All right. So are there, would that be possible that you can put on the project management hat? Um, hat? So you can just uh, define the scopes of the deliverables. And then so we know what kind of, we should get started to deliver first. And then uh, that could be our future plans uh, in the following meetings. I think we should agree first on, on if everyone understands the scope um, of like what's the end goal here. And if we agree on the goals, and then we could probably set milestones to. Okay. to um, and I see okay. Claudia has her hands up. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, so is it 
for the discussion that we were having on the other document, um, so is this or going to be Kubernetes or this is not? Because it seems that this is not. This one, absolutely, there is no Kubernetes involved in the, um, in the project. Um, so that's going to be actually the future plan. Uh, this actually is also the scope of this project. So the hosting environments, that's what we're going to use in the large language models. If uh, somebody can host this on a Kubernetes environment, that is great. So that's the showcase of how large language models work in the Kubernetes environments and all the access to the models will be um, application for that environment. So the so that's the, what I'm thinking about the uh, reference to Kubernetes, if that's a guess involved. I see. Hey. Oh, yeah, hey, go everyone. ahead. No, no, you no, go I, ahead. I was going to say, here's how we, so he, when we wrote the white paper, for example, we had two things, right? We had, uh, we had cloud native for AI uh -huh. and AI for cloud native, right? And I think, you know, what, what we prioritized in the white paper was cloud native for AI. And I think uh, one or multiple artifacts that we want to produce uh, should, in my opinion, address the part of like cloud, na uh, cloud native for AI. Mm -hmm. And so if we want to eat our own cooking, I would mm -hmm. say assuming cloud native should not be a, a bad thing or a future thing. It should be something that as a main goal, we want to see how people would deploy on Kubernetes and how we would ourselves pick, because that would be used as a reference to the community to say, hey, you know what? We built you a sample reference architecture that actually does something useful, which we could improve its usefulness over time to serve AI for cloud native, which is let me find you content faster, right? But that is the application, that is AI for, for cloud native community in that case. And so and that's why I said we should agree on the scope first. If, if we want cloud native for AI or focus on the AI serving the community uh, bit, that's, that's that. Yeah, so if you are adding the components of a, a language model backend, I think that's will be end-to-end uh, -end reference architecture because if we are just showing the um, backend itself without the reference apps, this will not be very productive, very uh, useful for the end users. But if you are showing the end-to-end -end with the service running in the front end, uh, that's what we have here is summarize the YouTube videos and also a backend running somewhere else provided by a hosting environment. That's also be a very good showcase. There are certain uh, things that I think uh, it also makes sense is that uh, when you run this, for example, you summarize the thousand, uh, nine thousand videos, and if you're running this in parallel, what are the latencies, right? This could be one of the benchmarks we can use uh, to help the uh, the community to understand the limits and potentially the ways that um, how language models works in backend and how to use uh, guess their uh, performance metrics uh, in the same space using the um, real world use uh, real world uh, applications. But in the, the truth is, I do not have a backhand of my own. If somebody can build it, either by you know the companies or just somebody else want to find a hosting place that we can use uh, by hosting the language models on Kubernetes, that's where it'd be great. Yeah, I mean, my... my so where my thought breaks looking at this is, um, so uh, do we want to at least use like one of the uh, of the tabs that we have in the landscape, for instance? So we we're doing this thing for cloud native AI mm -hmm. based things, but where I'm missing where is the cloud native part here? Or if uh, I, I am the only one missing it, that just help me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, definitely not the only one. Um, we are trying to uh, come up with a story right now. So cloud native AI, that is something that we are running. So, you know, we can use this application as a benchmark to this um, uh, reference architecture. 
And now um, this project is more come from the AI for cloud native, you know, for cloud native as a community, uh, not cloud native as a technology. So if you are able to use AI, you know, the app we are building provide the values to the cloud native community. That is AI for cloud native. So that's the way I see the value of these projects. But from the angle of a Kubernetes, oh, okay. large I language think models, I, I, that is yeah. something we can think about in a different way. Um, if uh, hypothetically, uh, since you are already speaking and you are uh, coming from a company with the uh, you know, resources, let's say Claudia, you build up your Kubernetes environments and you host you know, um, you know, any of the models on your end. And you want to have certain ways to benchmark your, uh, the infrastructure as, your, as well as your model. We probably can use in this application as the way to benchmark that. And using that as the benchmark is also a very good way to have this AI, uh, cloud native for AI thing, right? Okay, maybe I'm, I I'm think getting the this is, uh, this is This is, so two goals that you know, mm -hmm. um, and we need to make a decision about which one to prioritize as always. Okay. Like one is, uh, very simple. The red pill and the blue pill. The the red pill is uh, we want to build the cloud native reference architecture for writing LLM applications, and mm -hmm. the simply case here is this is uh, uh, this is we're going to use this application uh, to to showcase, for example, what what serving stack are we using, what runtime stack are we using, how can we switch runtime stacks. Uh, how would a developer approach this? And so provide guidance on the problems that we're trying to solve in a, in a white paper and maybe start with one, some, something small and then go for it. Then the blue pill is, uh, you know, we're going to focus first on making sure the application works as expected. We're going to make sure the categories are not are neat um, and, and to provide helpful uh, 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 responses to you know, as the user of the LLM, the user of the application, I don't care where it is hosted. So the persona right. for me is, I am a, I am someone who wants to look at content produced by cloud native communities. Okay. And I want an easy way to do it. Versus the other, the, the red pill was the persona is, I am a cluster admin or I am an SRE and I want to provide uh, uh, recommendations to, people who are building this end user applications and how to deploy that at scale in production. These are two different, very, very different uh, goals, but they can align, they can they can be merged, but we have to prioritize one um, before the other. I don't think, we, we probably could pad it a lies, but, and then it makes sense to have that many people, but if we're just targeting the application, I think, I think uh, that, that requires a small subset of the effort versus like, if we're if we're making it more elaborate on the architecture use, that might need more minds for it. Yeah. So I think uh, because all of us come from the engineering or uh, well, production background, so we are more look at the technology itself. But I also want to come up from the the endpoints end users perspective. If uh, I'm an end user of so a CNCF, I'm looking at the landscapes and looking at the technologies here. The quickest way I probably want to look at the uh, contents provided by this organization and see where I can just find the information I need. So I don't think the uh, the values of uh, having the reference architecture is less important, but I also want to focus on the other values we can provide to the CNCF as a community is that uh, the AI group probably is the only one in CNCF have the expertise, I mean, not, not say that's not expertise, has the uh, charters that's uh, provisioned for this um, um, generating the using uh, AI as a tool to generate the information for the community. So that is already written in our charter. And why not using this opportunity, if we can get additional values, have a reference architecture, architecture is great, but at least we can use this as an opportunity to fulfill our charter and then make sure that uh, this is something we can do as an organization. What do other people in the call think? I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. Any, any other opinions from folks on the call? So, yes, so I believe the first goal was to generate the content for the newsletter, right? Uh, so YouTube is one part of it, but of course, other than YouTube, there's a Twitter, uh, there are other projects, right? Mm -hmm. So from there, we thought of we can want to give some input to the VB newsletter of the Cube uh, CNC of community, right? That, uh, that goes up, right? 
So uh, getting, first of all, content at one place, which we can highlight with what is happening in the cloud native and the AI space. They're looking into, of course, one of the sales here channel, Twitter, or maybe somebody submits uh, us some kind of uh, some work they have done. Right, that was I think uh, was the first goal I believe. I, that's what I thought the first goal is, and of course, uh, we can uh, do further on this. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So I have a question on what you said, uh, Nipandra, uh, or maybe a question in general. What is the difference? So let's assume that we have the right architecture for everything we have in place here. Uh, if I just switch from a cloud native YouTube channel to let's say uh, uh, you know Mr. Beast right mm -hmm. channel, why would the cloud native working group or what's what's the difference the cloud native working group would make? You know because people could build a YouTube summarizer. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be so. It's just about the content that you index. It's not really the content that you're indexing is special, yes. But the application you're building, you could apply it to any other YouTube channel or content. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, deny that part. And of course, other than YouTube, you can write blogs as well, right? So uh, I mean, uh, as a, I mean, even currently, if we can just do it in manually as well, right? As a, uh, as a. <clears throat> What do you call it? as a output from the this working group, right? If we can say that every two weeks we are going to summarize what is happening in the industry in the cloud native AI space, right? A bulking get a different thing. So that is one output which we can start giving without waiting for the app to be built. Right. That is uh that is what I thought. Uh the first thing can can so something can go out from the working group from the day one, like from the two weeks onward, and then as the app is being built. We can we can do more stuff um, as we go forward. Maybe not. Uh, did I? No, I, I yeah I, I I yeah I I see. You. So people, I think people are leaning towards let's say uh, you know writing an LLM application and and versus uh, writing a reference architecture for an LLM application is what I'm hearing so far. Yeah, that's basically the two angles of the, the working group, right? The AI for um, cloud native and uh, cloud native for AI. So I don't think these are conflicting goals. It's just how, how we are going to structure and serve these two goals in this single project. That is more like a under discussion. So for certain ways, that's uh, our... I have a question. Um, so, do you think we we need a lot of folks um, to implement this? I I think, uh, in my opinion, maybe a couple of folks uh, could actually work on some of these things. Um, one concern that I have is that if we have too many people, then mm -hmm. we each person is just going to do just a little part, and then maybe we yeah, I agree. We're not gonna, we're not going to make a lot of progress. Okay. Um. So my thinking, so uh, Ricardo, I definitely agree with you from the, you know, if you are just operates within the engineering resources and which is become very, um, uh, you know, budget driven, it's definitely uh, uh, smaller the better uh, in terms of uh, productivity. Uh, the way I see from differently on the uh, community-based project is that uh, the, uh, you know, there's no way we can exclude people uh, for number one. The thing number two is that uh, people are from different background. We are not designed to work as a group or as a team in the company setting. We are working as volunteer basis. So not everybody becomes available and they are having a second pile of eyes looking at the same piece of code. It's not only help us to make things go in the right way, also can provide the additional education purposes for people who are actually in this meeting. So I do think people here come from different level of experiences. Some are still as a student, some are more experienced. So. Um, Getting people on board and let them picking up small things is a good education process. Um, for people who are more experienced, this also, um, you know, our, our fair share of uh, being uh, responsible for the community to mentor people to get started. But as you said, yeah, 
if uh, I'm operating within the, let's like say, my own company's team, I would definitely want to have higher productivity, not to have everybody doing the same thing. So that's why I have these uh, sign up uh, tables. If you are willing to contribute, and if you can spend, uh, if you can commit certain amounts of time, uh, this will be a great time you can coordinate. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so I, th I think maybe one of the next steps uh, we can do is uh, break down the work and 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 assign to each one of the members that are interested in and in participating. So uh, I appreciate if you can put your information here, if you decide to uh, move on with the, you know, either way. So as, uh, as we discussed, there's a two goals here. One is that uh, we provide the generous the content. The other way is uh, from the engineer, uh, from the cloud native uh, perspective, we, if we can come up with a reference architecture that's how help the app to generate the contents. That will be a even higher goal that we can achieve. But I feel that that is um, I it's a required certain budgeting. Uh, my, I cannot I cannot just commit my company resource to it. So that's one of the things I'm not able to do. Um, but if a certain other companies or certain other organizations can stand this up, create a Kubernetes environments, creating the large language model of serving backend. That's where be a very good reference case we can use to you know redirect our models to that service. Um, I have so a, a, mm -hmm. I have a thought. Right earlier, I think I forgot. So, someone mentioned it, that uh, when you run a benchmarking workload in your cluster for some other purpose, you may need to have some uh, like test cases. I think right now, sometimes uh, when we benchmark the performance of LLM, we just uh, let it generate some random stories. Mm. And here, like the CNCF channel, like I mean, show has a uh, 9.7 thousand YouTube videos. So to summarize all of them, will take a larger amount of uh, compute resources and time, right? It's impossible to run it on somebody's uh, laptop. So can we make this make this project as like a, a I don't know test cases uh, resource? Like if someone needs to run an LLM for some other purposes, maybe they can put it. We can provide some API or maybe a way to just run this as a part on their uh, Kubernetes cluster. And then this will just uh, put the transcript, put the summarization. Meanwhile, they can do their benchmark for other parameters. I think that is a very uh, helpful way to get things started. You know, I do feel that this is a real world use case. And I will, if I just push into a, another dimension, so we have this uh, uh, amount of workloads we need to run. Um, the you know certain characteristics like latency and uh, contents, uh, the length of the contents is one of the dimensions. The other one is uh, because we are actually serving the end users, we can get feedbacks from the the end users. Um, what's the quality of the content? Right. You are not just a summarize uh, for everybody. Uh, as I said, the the prompts we are using, we are serve different personas. If you are not able to, if the language model does not have the capabilities to generate the contents we we desire, then I don't think that is a good language large language model to do this purpose. So we can potentially build a leaderboard on this using these projects. You know, we get feedbacks from people when they are using the difference when they're using the UI or dashboard, and we also get the um, you know when we run this model, run this app to generate the contents. We can also generate uh, performance stats, and from those two angles, the performance stats and the end user feedback, we potentially can build up certain level of a leaderboard uh, using that uh, real world applications. Uh, a question regarding what do you mean by generating summaries? Is it just generating shorter content for people to read, or it, it would be like uh, really like just like a, a LRM, like OpenAI, I can actually ask um, the, the end product what's the, why the decision is to go this route architecture wise, uh, why the API standard is defined that way, and is there any other alternatives, things like that. What, what is the yeah? What what is the actual the end product will be like? Yeah, that's a very good way. Um, <laughs> so 
So Victor, thank you for asking that question. Uh, so my own, uh, so these are, so the two functions I want to have is, um, you know, you can has, uh, have different level of search, right? So you can search by keyword and also you can search by content. So if I just looking at your question, if I want to uh, search information by providing the description of a certain product, so that's the way we want to search. Uh, so that's based on the contents we are going to, we are, you know, we summarized. So whether the contents we summarized consist of the information you are looking for is going to be a usability question. So if, uh, you know, if I watch the video, I have the, all the information, but in my summary, there's no such information. I will see that as a poor summarization. So, uh, so if I'm an end user, I will read that's our large language models as, um, you know, undesirable. So uh, that's back to my original statement. Would that be a good use case that we can benchmark the large language models as in terms of usability as well as the performance? So that's where we serve in the way that we are, you know, AI for cloud native, or cloud native for AI. I think that's very useful. I just think that it, it will take some time to we we'll get uh, some deliverable, right? Okay. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it's. It, I don't think it's a straightforward, right? But, yeah. Ser yeah, searching searching through the video is actually right one of the research challenge, right? So if we look at some of the commercial product like uh perplexity dot AI. They provide a YouTube search function. Uh -huh. But then if you just if you try like the return result is not very uh it's not as good as their other like academic paper search. Because uh, I think uh the transcript from the a lot of the YouTube videos is not very uh accurate or it's uh out like for some because a large language model also have a context window. So like an hour long uh, video is, the transcript is probably bigger than the context window of LLM. So summarization will be the first step making the video become searchable, I think. So from, from, from end product point of view, I think there are several steps. One is uh, get a transcript uh, from the YouTube API. That's the easy part. And then uh, how do we fit it into our um, uh, context window? We probably need to cut into several parts, summarize each part, and then make a like a mad reduce uh, uh, procedure to summarize the whole thing. And then based on the summarization, we probably put the summarization into a ref. And then from the right, the videos can become searchable. So there will be several steps. If you put the original YouTube video into the right directly, the search result might not be very uh, relevant. But that's just my intuition. And, and in the process of building this, there will be several reference architecture can be built, right? How do you build a rack that can become one reference architecture? And then how do you do the map reduce? That's another one of handling our context window uh, limitation. Claudia, you have a thing you can raise. Yeah, um, so what, trying to think like of the, like a mini MVP thing, like what would be the minimum package slash product, whatever that we can deliver. Because yeah, I, I agree with uh, the thought that this is big and can take a long time. Uh, so even for, for ourselves to get a sense of what it actually means, like hands-on, what that means to do this project, like what would be a mi minimum number of things that we can do so that we can get a sense of that like i don't know um I, i'm saying random things now uh like we do this um uh, transcript through llm to like one video that we can all watch and all assess this works or not and or i don't know i don't know what would that be a reasonable thing, but uh -huh. uh, if I were to do this 
on my own, I would try to figure out what's the minimum thing that I can put together and then move on. Yeah, so Claudia, I, so I, in, in, as a side project, I built something similar. Um, I don't think this, the number of the YouTube videos are, are important from an effort perspective. It's more from a cost standpoint, because when you index all of these U, U videos, you need somewhere to store them. And that somewhere yeah. will cost more money to store. So budget wise, it will be different from an MVP. Uh, if you can get, uh, you know, if you can get the function working with, uh, with uh, let's say, 20 YouTube videos, you should be able to get it with a thousand, except that the scale will be different from compute storage and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the main effort that I see here uh, beyond just the architecture is the, as um, who, who mentioned, yeah, Boo, Boo, Boo and went mentioned. Um, so YouTube videos come from people with different accents, like all of us here, they come without punctuation. Um, and so data prep will be the main, I think that the hardest piece of this uh, uh, project to get meaningful things. Because once you have the data prepped correctly, you can engineer how the data is structured for the context limits that you have and for the overlaps and whatnot. So this, I think the, the the challenge here is figuring out the data prep. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I see. Yeah, but from an effort people people perspective, uh, it, it shouldn't make any difference in my mind. It's mm -hmm. go and we're automating. Yeah. Um. Just for the budget wise, I did uh, some uh, ask ChatGPT to do math for me. I uh, said so, uh, for just one thousand YouTube videos and come up with the budget of uh, two dollars. So I'm just using the. <clears throat> The MISO 7B model are hosted by AWS. Uh, you can check the pricing over there. So if you are just uh, stay with the lowest paying tier, we pay $2 for all the 1,000 videos. Uh, so I don't think that's the huge amount. And it's a doable for us. But more, uh, more to the point of uh, making this um, uh, app as a useful benchmarking for the um, cloud native community, that's a if we're able to stand up the backend on our own environments, or somebody's going to host this, obviously, would that be something useful to benchmark the uh, performance as well as the usability? Because uh, eventually the usability will be evaluated by the end user. So I see that as a valuable feedback, uh, human feedback uh, reinforced learning uh, for the language models to have a real evaluation. Oh, I missed so for, I missed the uh, the second point. So uh, the first point, I mean, I think you're calculating the tokens. I, there's also costs about. Um, so yeah. if you're using, if, if I don't know if we're so we need if we're doing this on an own environment, uh -huh. uh, I don't know how much a thousand tube text would translate in terms of embeddings and size, and so that would mean that for the size of those embeddings, we'll need storage. Storage is usually cheap, the cheapest uh, or cheap in general, but we will need storage um, uh, for that. Uh, so that that is the storage cost. I think the the serving cost of we're doing this also on prem will be where will be lower uh, or cheaper. Um, but the, I think the data scale is is what was my main concern. Uh, yeah, I think that is okay because if you are just looking at the pine comp uh, pricing. I don't think yeah. that will be more than two gigabytes in terms of uh, storage we're going to need. So it's going to be very minimal. Probably you can start from a starter. Uh, but that's why we are come risk limits, uh, as we see. Uh, so. So I don't think we need the uh, namespaces at the beginning also for an MVP, right? So uh -huh. you, you will need, so namespaces is more when you have multiple users of the application or or the LLM that you don't want them to see the same thing, right? So you're factoring in namespaces, and so the the some some vector DPs provide namespaces as a form of multi tenancy of data to prevent people to peek into each other's videos or uh, or things. And then I don't think we need that for now. At least, uh, yeah. So I I feel like you know. 
there's the, the 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 complicated part would be the human hours spent in uh, either cleaning the data or figuring out a way to automate the cleanup of the data. That's it. The rest mm -hmm. is really design and architecture, and 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 we could even use managed things for the proof of concept. Uh, but if we want to be cloud native AI, we probably should also think about it. And, and I know I know we decided. Uh, so I, I'm assuming that we decided that the LLM application is the is 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 the main goal for the group uh yeah. at least the, the the main the initial goal let's let's say so mm -hmm. if, if if you want speed uh you're gonna want to use managed and endpoints for all yeah. of those things and then when we start to think about architecture we're gonna want to think about uh kubernetes and how oh, really? to host that so yeah. Well, I mean, do, you, do you want to summarize? We, we have five minutes left. Do you want to summar, summarize next steps? So I think uh, it's a uh, less controversial that we want to have some capabilities of generating the contents, and at least from the a few comments I see on the chat. So let's just uh, have some of the initial um, capabilities of generating the contents first. And then the long-term plan, I think, is uh, we want to move to certain reference architectures that we can show end-to-end, -end, what's the capabilities of the cloud native AI can work with the real world applications like we are using here. So that's going to be a long-term planning. So, but in the meantime, we are just using the hosted environments um, from AWS, for example, using the large language models from PyCon to use the uh, vector DBs. So that's going to be one of the starters we can use. Yeah, and if I'm I... not mistaken, I'm understanding all these contacts. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. I just, I was going to say, if we, if I would summarize in outcomes, so based on the discussion so far, the first outcome is people. So I, th I think my, my interpretation is outcome number one is uh, understand what it takes to build an LLM application uh -huh. and then have the knowledge to do that. And then outcome number two is understand what it takes to scale that application. Um, and that's secondary uh, for outcome number one. Uh, I think you would want to get, you know, you, you you want to reuse a lot of the components that exist today to get you to learn mm -hmm. how or what it takes to build an LLM application. And then the second goal is the harder one, which is, I think, that also what, what the Cloud Native AI Working Group is trying to uh, solve. But for people to solve this problem, well, they need to understand what it takes to build an LLM. And I think that is a noble goal for this project. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So the, these are these would be the two outcomes. Like learn to what it takes to build an LLM application, and what it and and, and that's milestone number one. Milestone number two, learn what it takes to scale an application. It could be a parallel uh, project because uh, you know scaling an LLM application doesn't have to mean scaling in uh, a YouTube summarizer LLM application. But understanding to build, understanding having the understanding to build one is is probably interesting for for some folks. Yeah. Um, so uh, maybe we can just, uh, uh, let's see, list all these uh, folks areas here, and then we have a uh, sign up sheets, people who are wanting to do what. Uh, so we can just uh, contact uh, by email or offline uh, to, see, to see if you have interest or bandwidth to do it. All right, so I see we have two more minutes. Uh, any questions we have so far? Um, so this is going to be a bi-weekly meeting, uh, alternating from the working group meetings. And if that is too much or too little, then let me know. Sounds good. Everybody good with that? So can we write yeah. down the milestone, uh, whatever is required, right? Uh, then only I think it's better to put the name against that, that uh, what is uh, what is needed when uh, kind of a thing. And uh -huh. uh, let's say the example, what how, what is required to build an LMA. So uh, I'm not sure how many of uh, we have built one. So um, if so, how would you want to go about it? Does anybody want to share kind of a demo or uh, give a reference that how they have built an LLM app and take it from there? Or um, if somebody has already done some kind of app building, can they demo it here? Something like that, mm -hmm. so that we can take it from there, right? So currently, I don't know how many of us has built an LLM. Anybody has been here? Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, we can push that into the meeting for the next meeting. 
Uh, so the next meeting will be, uh, as we said, we have some near-term goals and long-term goals. So what can be done as what time? Uh, that's going to be in more detailed discussion next time. And also, if people already have built out uh, large language model apps, we can have a quick demo uh, to see how this one works. Seeing is believing for many of us. Um, yeah. Again, so this is just an initial discussion. Uh, I, do, I do believe that uh, more discussions will generate more innovations. So let's use that uh, for the future discussions as well. All right, time is up. Great to see you all. If I don't see you during the week, have a good weekend, and I'll see you in two more weeks. Oh, actually, we're going to see you next week. Have a you know, work group meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.